Today's episode is a crossover episode, part two, which is what my good buddy Brody called it when we sat down to talk in their new location called the Fessick Canteen Podcasting Studio in the great city of Aberdeen, South Dakota. So if you heard my conversation with them the first time, Brody and Carly are lots of things. First of all, they are the hosts of the Rural Revolution podcast. They dropped this episode on their show as well. They are also the co-founders of The Market on the Plaza, which we talk about that in our first episode. You have to go back and listen to the first episode because we don't dive all the way back in. It's kind of a status update, like where are we now? And then Carly is also the owner of Colorful Creations, which is an art studio on Main Street there in Aberdeen. They're both so dynamic. And I sit down with them and I just feel like I'm home. And I think what's so cool about that is that's actually what we talk a lot about. So both of us are launching both of our companies or groups. We're launching physical places. And so we get into a a pretty rich discussion about placemaking, uh, third places in particular. Like what what does that look like post-pandemic? Which we know we're not all the way through it. We talk about that a little bit. What does that look like? What do people really need? We talk about how do we as people move forward from the challenges of 2020. And honestly, it's just a rich, beautiful conversation. And all of it applies to what this is like for all of us in small communities. So I hope that you enjoy listening to this as much as I enjoyed recording it with them. They are a beautiful couple. (laughs) They're not a couple. They're business partners, which we also talk about the value of that. We talk about the value of finding your tribe. We talk about lots of topics, but it's really about humanity as people, how we can move forward. So if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow them at The Rural Revolution. You can find them everywhere you listen to podcasts and they do a fantastic job. I hope that you love the crap out of this because man, I listened to the whole thing just because It was fun to re-listen to the conversation. They're fantastic people. I hope you guys love it. Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of the Rural Revolution, another episode of the Rural Revolution podcast. What up, what up, what up? Where you are. Um, Let's see. I don't know. What do we... I kind of want to just jump in. Okay. We have... Crossover episode part two with Rebecca <laughs> Rebecca from Oaks. That's your website, right? Rebecca from Oaks? Rebecca from Oaks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Rebecca Undo from Growing Small Towns. Uh, welcome back to the to the cast. Welcome back to the pod. What do the kids say? I don't. I have welcome, zero, welcome zero to the like, new studio. I know. Thank yes. you. You guys, this is so rad. So last time you were it's here, so we were cool. in like a back room with like one blinking bulb above us. It was us a little darker. It was a little darker. <laughs> a little colder. A little colder. Uh-huh. You're uh-huh. so nice. <laughs> You're so it's, aw- no, it's awesome in here though, really. This is this is super cool. So it's it's fun. It's fun to fun to have a little different space. So what's yeah. going on in what's going on in Oaks? Last time when we last left Rebecca, she was renovating <laughs> a giant fucking building in Oaks. <laughs> Turning it into a co-working space. Uh, we're still renovating. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was I was telling you guys before, like, we just don't ever get to hear enough of the the true downs mm-hmm. along with mm-hmm. the ups. And I, I try to be honest about that. Like, I actually did a, a quick little video a couple of weeks ago. And I just, I just shared that, like, that I just cried, you know, like just one of those days where nothing went right. And so we're a nonprofit and Mm -hmm. we're trying to find, well, right now, like it's mostly private equity partnerships, which is great, but it's also like, where's the public funding and who wants to help me? And, you know, just, you kind of end up feeling like, am I desperate? Can they, can they smell (laughs) the desperation? And then it's constantly putting yourself out there and constantly dealing with the rejection, right? When it comes and damn, is it hard? Mm -hmm. You know, but the overall, the building, it looks fantastic. So interesting, weird thing. I don't know how this went with you guys and your renovation, but like the cost of lumber went up over a hundred, over a hundred percent. So I actually saw a stat, it was 113% year over year. So my entire building's framed out with metal studs. Cool. Which is weird, but they were half the cost Uh currently. Isn't that crazy to think about? It's Should we do a metal siding wall instead of a shiplap wall then? Too late. <laughs> yeah, I love shiplap. <laughs> love me some shiplap. But it's it's super weird. So, yeah. and like people have actually come in and they're like, just want to look at your studs. I'm like, there's my studs. There they are. Are but you leaving them exposed? No. 
Yeah, no, we're sheet rocking over them. But it's, so it's, yeah, you're not even going to see them, but it's just, it's just super weird, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So there's things like that. I just got a quote back on updating a railing. There's this enormous railing on the yeah. balcony. Oh my, I'm like, I can't. It's silly. It's insane. And so I think it's just getting blindsided by the cost. Mm. Like people be like, well, what's your budget for it? I'm like, my budget got blown a really long time ago. Yeah. So it just yeah. doesn't really matter. So- but we're still in the middle of it. We're still moving forward. We were supposed to be May one opening. We're not. We're not going to make that. If we if we make June one, that'll be that'll be aces. Sure. So we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So kind of walk me through the. If I walk in the front doors, what's the experience going to be for this? Yeah. So that's actually really it's a great place to start. So one of the challenges that I had with this is that you know it's membership driven. Mm-hmm. So you pay to be in the space. Cool. Unless we're open for an event, right? So there's actually a a vestibule. I don't know if that's the proper it word. It is. Well, I, I assume that's, that's the right word. It was existing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you walk through these double doors, you walk into this vestibule, the door straight ahead and people can't see me. You guys can see me. So I can see it. The yeah. door straight ahead will be the locked door to the main co-working space. Mm-hmm. Then there's a door that'll be off to the side that will be open eight to five every day. And that will have like our donor wall and who we are and our company values. And I want to do a really cool selfie wall in there to Mm -hmm. like encourage people to interact with the space. But basically like if you want a co-working tour, if you want to be part of our events, here's a, you know, big, I I can picture like a big calendar on the wall, right? Like this, this month at Growing Small Towns. So people can at least get a sense of what that all looks like, Mm -hmm. right? And nobody has to man it. Nobody has to be there. So then when you walk into the space, it's, I mean, Okay, to just remind everybody, it's over 8,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. And for the main floor, it's a, over a 17-foot ceiling. So it's just massive, right? So off to the this like left-hand side when you walk in, and again, there's almost no walls on the main floor because mm-hmm. when I first envisioned this, I was like, okay, and I had this plan and it was build, I was building walls and I was building ceilings. If you can imagine, yeah. right? Because yep. it's a really high, it was like half a million bucks right out the gate. And I'm like, okay, a, don't know how this space is really going to work for my people. Like, yeah. what does our community really need? So I went with the mindset instead of keeping it super open, open concepts so that it can be really flexible. And then down the road, if people say, this is the spaces we really need this to yeah. be, I've got the ability to do that. Right. right. Okay. So there'll be like a big comfortable seating area with couches and fun, comfy chairs. And basically this big open wall that we hope to display art. I really want to partner with our local art group and actually get some, maybe even statewide installations in, Yeah, you know? So then you walk into like forward is kind of the main event space. There's four dedicated desks for co-working. So those would be a higher price tag because you can like rent them and keep your stuff there. Yeah. Right. Also, depending again on how my sponsors come through, there's phone booths that provide that quiet, right? you know? Mm. So I want to get three of those again, just to kind of tuck in this corner because the whole thing is a wide open concept. And if you need to record a podcast or have a phone call, you're going to want those yep. spaces, right? So then in the back, there's kind of a cafe vibe area with some pubs height tables so people could stand at those as well. Like I like to move around right. when I work. Right. A whole big, long bar, fridge, you know, that whole thing. Very Google of you. Thank this, you. I know this whole thing's very, uh, very hip. It's really cool. It's going to be so damn cool. So then underneath the balcony where there was already a ceiling, we built out some of those spaces. So there's two huddle rooms. They're only like seven by seven. I mean, they're small little rooms, right? It'll fit like a table this big and yeah. two chairs, but it'll have screen. There'll be a monitor there. Again, great for meetings. Yeah. Then a full conference room in the back, my office in the back, and then bathrooms underneath. Upstairs, Oh, I got, I can't, you guys have to come and like, you're going to come and yes, see it. Of course. Absolutely. But it's just a big, wide open, basically like a training or innovation space, mm-hmm. if you will. And we exposed the brick, the original oh, brick and clay. Don't talk to me about exposed brick, yeah. Rebecca. Okay. Well, seriously though. So it's, you know, it's, she was, she, Dorothy Jane was built in 1924. Mm-hmm. Okay. So original clay tile and brick. So we, we say, all right, we're going to expose. We're going to expose all of this. Well, you expose it and it's got this like black, weird sealant kind of product all over it. It doesn't look super cool, right? So then it becomes, what do we do with that? How do we, mm. how do we get that off? Sandblasting blasting would have like totally deteriorated yes. the material. Mm. So we found these guys out of Fargo that blast with pulverized glass. And it's so fine. It was like finer than sand. And they did it. And I mean, I'll show, I can show you guys pictures. It's, I mean, I like almost cry when I see it because it's just so 
It's so cool. Like it's so rad. It's, and there's like different colors of brick and there's some, you know, like there's clay tiles with Mm -hmm. like the horizontal lines and then there's bricks. It's just super original, super cool. I mean, that, that room upstairs is going to be a freaking showstopper. I'm just so excited. We'll have yoga in there. Nice. Mm -hmm. Like, well, there's just anything people want. Like, what do you guys want? Let's have it in our space. I love, so side note, I uh, renovated um, I bought the building that Colorful Creations is currently in. Yeah. And when we did that, there's three apartments upstairs. So me and my husband renovated the first apartment that overlooks Main Street. Yeah. And so I was nursing at the time. So I would like come in and out because he was like taking down walls and all the sawdust and stuff. And so I remember walking in there one time and it's him and uh, his brother in there and they're taking down a wall, like one of the divider walls. And they take down the wall and I see this section of the wall that was exposed and there was brick on there, Mm -hmm. but there was a layer of plaster and lath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sheetrock and sheetrock. So three layers over this brick. That's a bitch. It it was. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at him and I go, he goes, don't give me that look. (laughs) And I said, we're doing it. We're taking down the entire thing and we're exposing that brick. And you know, what's really interesting is you see the age and the character of every single brick. Like you see a hole and you're like, I wonder what they hung there. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You see every single character. So when you say the description of these bricks, like I'm seeing all of the ages and the years, because my building was built in 1912. Yeah. Cool. So cool. It's so cool to see the character of it. Yeah. There's serial numbers stamped on all, like most of the clay tiles and that there's just something so cool about it. So it's also Mm -hmm. the whole back wall on the, lower level That's with so the, fun. so the conference room in my office mm. and there's a chimney too. So the chimney runs through my office and through that room upstairs. Mm-hmm. It's just, you cannot uh, buy that character. No. And what's also make it. really cool is that there are four windows upstairs in the balcony that have been covered since I was, since I've been alive. They were covered before. I mean, they were covered yeah. over and we open those back up and literally it's just like, I swear I heard angels. I, I swear. Like yeah. I walk, cause you walk in now, you know, cause it's a, a street to alley building. And so you can't get any natural light off the sides because there's buildings. You're flanked by buildings. So these three windows, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Oh my gosh. It just makes you wonder why people did what they did in Mm -hmm. construction back then. It's really interesting. It's very interesting. It's super interesting. But it's, so it's exciting. The space sounds very welcoming. Oh man, I hope so. That's the the idea. (laughs) So, So, these members that yeah. will be able to come yeah. in there, they'll be able to work from there. Mm-hmm. They'll be able to have conferences there. Yep. Um, rent, rent any of the rooms for any of their gatherings. Like I, I can really see like book yeah. clubs and I mean, yeah. hell, like if you just want a place to go, like I'll have to figure out the hardest thing for me is that balance of like public stuff and, and the yeah. private stuff, you know, I mean, yeah. but I'll, we'll figure that out. Right. Cause I hope to just host tons of shit in there. I mean, really. And because, invite lots of people mm-hmm. to come Because and your whole game, again. though, is growing small towns, right? Right. So you're wanting to bring a lot of things to town. Right. For this. And then bring outsiders to my town. Because there was no other space for this to happen. Not to this exact degree, right? We have, right. like, banquet rooms and, you yeah. know. Right. You, yeah. right, right. So, yeah. But this is this is designed for that, like, experiential education, growing yourself kinds yeah. of stuff. Like, which again, sounds so existential and not clear, but I I guess to me, it's like, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Then Mm -hmm. come and try it here. You know, like, I love the idea that feeling of like, oh my God, I did it. Like some could be standing up and speaking in front of a room. It could be painting on a water. It could be painting a watercolor. Like, I just think our entire life doesn't have to stay small just because we, we chose to be in a small place. Mm -hmm. Like we can still live a really expansive life and there's really cool people doing that stuff all throughout our region. And I want to bring them to my town. When's your TEDx? I was going to say, I want want that entire thing on a sticker (laughs) on my planner. Yeah. Just because you live in a small town doesn't mean you need to do small things. Right. I mean, the world is more open to us now than ever before. Mm -hmm. I mean, And it's so funny. People be like, where did this come from? And I was like, my need, my own Mm -hmm. deep desire to, (laughs) and it does not always have to be like, oh, okay. If I want that, I got to go to Fargo. Mm. I mean, Fargo is, Fargo is a great place. I went to school there. Yeah. You know, it was wonderful place to be, but it's not home to me anymore. Right. So like actually, and I just think that lends 
such a sense of place and sense, sense of community and sense of belonging to people. Yeah. So that's where we're at guys. Fun. Should be. I think it better be. <laughs> better be. I love that you're creating a place where your kids are going to be able to make memories and do things for the first time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're you're creating a space where an entire community or somebody that's 90 is going to be able to do something for the first time because they might not be able to travel. That's what I hope. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the intention behind the whole thing, right? Yeah. I love it. And if you have, if you guys are just catching up with us and you have not heard about her story, go back to our uh, previous episodes and you're going to hear her story of really the, the first couple thoughts of this building starting. Um, yeah. So go back and listen to this because you'll, you'll be amazed of the story of why this building. Yeah. Yeah. She's special. And then for more info, go over to the Growing Small Towns podcast. Yeah. Come and see me guys. Right. Look at that cross promotion. That's such good cross promotion. <laughs> so, okay. So when we've been talking, we've kind of been texting back and forth for a while now. I'm I'm very interested in, I, I mean, I'm not going to jinx it by saying we're done with the pandemic, but I feel like we're, we're coming we're out of it, right? We're moving through it, sure. You've been vaccinated yet? No. No? Okay. I got my first one. You got- Not yet. Okay. Well, they're I, I hugged you today. I'm sorry. Well, I'm fine. You know why? So. It's because I'm not <laughs> fine. I'm not even sorry about it. I swear. <laughs> like if I come at you like this with my arms out and you 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 open, oh yeah, I'm yeah. basically gonna tackle gonna you happen. at this point. Yeah, it's on. So I mean, that's the perfect example. Like, what? Where do we go from here? How does the world look different? How do small towns and all of these places that are third third spaces, right? So there's this theory that you have- I was going to say, we need to explain that probably. Yes. So <laughs> the theory that you have your home and that's the first place. And then you have your second place, which is your work. Right. And then you have the third space, which is the, your, your libraries and your restaurants and your bars and your coffee shops and your bookstores and your working, co-working spaces and all, the, all of these other places that we can get together and, and that's where community happens. Right. I think in the past year, we have seen that place one and place two have combined. Mm -hmm. Place three has been a struggle. Right. And place three hasn't existed. Right. Yes. I mean, I would, I think, I think we can kind of say that. I mean, people got really creative, right. Mm -hmm. To figure out like game night on, on zoom. Like yep. that's a third, that's an example of a third place. Only it's not a different place. Yes. And it's not I a do, physical location. And I do think that that has been partly like anybody with even a touch of wanderlust yeah. has mm. just struggled to beat hell. Right. I mean, you just can't, you can only like dress up <laughs> your home so many ways. Like and people say like, get your, get your office set up. Well, you can do that. But then how do I get the bar vibe that I'm missing at yep. my home? Like, it's real. Yeah. Places and the sense of belonging that they create is real. So as we look forward now, Carly and I have been doing a lot of this sort of, I, I don't know, last or the other mm -hmm. week we talked with Josh Hofer about placemaking, right? Like, and so that's kind of how, how I got interested in this is we were trying to figure out where we're very close to the market opening. And so what does that vibe feel like when you're there? Right. right. Like what kind of space do we do we want it to be? And then how do you how do you do that? So knowing what we know now and what has happened over the past year, if if place one and place two are together, but you also have co-working spaces where maybe place two and place three are together. Right. That's my situation, which is weird. Right. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. yeah. I, what is that? What are people going to want now as we all emerge from our hibernation here and want to get back into places? Is it more connection? Is it more technology? So that all the places can be combined? Is a third space still in port? Are there still three spaces? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, so I, here's what I think. I think that the idea of a third place is still really important, but I don't know that they will, I think the separation among these three places may be gone forever. I mean, as far as the need for them to be three separate spaces. Because sure. right? I just don't know, it's crazy. You think about some of like the bigger companies. There are a couple of commercial buildings like in Fargo. I can mm -hmm. I can say I know about Fargo specifically that have been sitting empty for almost a year now. If you can run your business without having all that overhead, why why wouldn't you? Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I think I think we're in a new frontier somewhat of hybrid everything. So we used to talk mm. about like hybrid events where it's part physical and part digital. I the just, worst. I know, but I think that's, I think that's what it's going to be. I mean, I think that's what it's going to be. I think there's going to be aspects of both going forward. So I kind of feel that way about places too, but I do not think the intention and the need 
that a third place fills is going away. Like whether you physically get it from another place or not. So like in my case, Mm -hmm. I think as I think about what I want my space to feel like, the third place angle is definitely something I'm I'm thinking about, right? right? It's not just a it's not just a workspace. Cause if that's all I cared about, you know how I would have designed that building, I would have put up a shit ton of cubicles. Yep. But that's not what I did. Mm-hmm. Right. So and and for you guys too, I mean, I think you asked what what do I think people need? I think people need connection. Yes. yes. I really think that's the thing that's the part of our humanity that is just crying and aching. Yeah. We're longing for it, mm-hmm. I think. So, you know, what does that look like for you guys? I mean, I think you'll you'll figure that out as you go, but coffee is like such a key part of my life. If I ran a coffee shop, I would want my space to be like a necessity, like a necessity stop. Mm-hmm. Not just for the actual sustenance, substance or sustenance of coffee. Go but of how good it feels to go in and get it from people that know me, that care about me, Mm -hmm. that want to see me. I think people need laughter, like a shit ton of laughter. Mm -hmm. I just, these are the things I know I need, I guess. Maybe I I can't speak for everybody, obviously, but I, when I think about what I want my space to be, I, that's what I want. I want people to feel emotionally pulled to it. I agree with that. And we were, you know, talking about that last week, Brody and I and uh, our, our team. And my biggest thing for the, the market is I want it to feel like their home away from home. Mm -hmm. Like our space has literally been created because we've listened to what the community wants. Right. And so that is all these things that are coming together of this is literally your home Mm -hmm. that we're creating for you of, things that you've talked about wanting. So how are we being intentional to execute that idea? Right. So I'm taking that one step further and saying, if place one and place two are combined for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. what amenities do we need to bring to that, that home? Right. Do we need super strong Wi-Fi? Do like, well, I don't uh, think we're going to be place one. We're not going to be their home. As far as a physical, I think we can be their workspace and their, community space, I think it's more along the lines of Rebecca's space as far as Mm -hmm. you get that social aspect. Like, I don't see somebody coming in and just getting out of bed to come. You know what I mean? I mean, I might some days. Um, (laughs) But to create that space. So what do they want? Like, I want to be able to talk to my barista and ask her how her time in Rapid City was this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what's going on in people's lives. I miss that. I do too. And I, th- I think that's like one of the questions you could maybe ask yourselves as you're, as you're planning this out yeah. too, is like, what would make somebody look forward to coming to you? Mm. Like what are, cause I just think there's so much hope in thinking about yeah. looking forward mm-hmm. towards something like this whole last year has just been like barely keeping your freaking head above water. Right. It just, in terms of how everything feels like, you're, we're treading and we're treading and we're treading and we're all moving forward, right? In one way or another, but it it feels like we've just been kind of at a standstill in some respects because a lot of it is like, when is this going to happen? And we have no control over that. So mm-hmm. to be able to just surrender and be like, well, this is what it is. And mm. that's hard for people. I mean, it's hard yeah. for me. I, yeah. I don't know if you guys experienced that. Like you made enormous leaps forward despite the pandemic. So did I, mm-hmm. but I still can say that and be honest about it. Like it was just times where I was like, oh my God, like how long am I going to have to just tread water right. here? Yep. You know? So I don't know. I just think people need something to look forward to. And I think if we... I, I'm doing. I'm going to be doing this um, session for a, a retail company here in the summer. And what the woman who's hiring me, what we talked about, was putting the humanity back into the way they do business. Mm. And I feel like that's what we get an opportunity to do: is how do we put the humanity back into a third place? Because technology just takes enough of the edge off of yep. that human interpersonal connection. Like that's that's where it's going to be at. I think. Again, you ask me what I think. This is what I think. I, I don't. I don't have. There's no. I'm not a researcher. I'm not overly data driven. But but you are very good at listening and watching to what's going on around you. So that's why I I find your information your insight valuable. I also will agree with everything you're saying. Also, because I was at Colorful Creations this last weekend, 
And this last weekend we had five parties booked. Oh, fun. Back to back. Yep. And that has not happened in a year and a half. And how did that, honestly, like tell us oh, how that made gosh, you feel? You guys, like I cannot, I, I gonna get woke choked up, up at 5.30 in the morning, excited yeah, to go in. Of course you were. Right? Be- yeah. Because, you know, normally it would be, okay, how do I keep the doors open? What do I need to do to pivot? What do I need to do to keep moving? But now it's like, oh my gosh, is normal back? Do people want to come in? And I can't tell you how many people came in. I'm like, I am so happy to see you. Like you're still here. Mm -hmm. And just to see Mm -hmm. people and re-engage in the connection and people being able to just create memories together. Like it was such a light at the end of the tunnel for me for Colorful Creations in general, just to see people in there. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for all of them. Yes. And just, they're comfortable enough to go out. But after Saturday, you know, driving back to Watertown to get my kiddos, because of course, grandma had to watch them, which she absolutely loved. I'm sure it was related to a twister arm. Yeah, I really did. (laughs) Um, It was one of those moments, you know, where you, I'm like, I'm going to just go have a beer because I want to be around people more. Yeah. Even though I was around all these people, Mm -hmm. but I feel like we're at that moment where people need a reason to get out of their house and they're not sure what to do anymore, but they want something to do. And I feel like we're at the pivotal moment of creating things for them to do Mm -hmm. that I want to do. Yeah. You know, for me, like I'm, I'm a, I am an emotional empath kind of a person. Right. So I just think, so like, if it's not physically tackling people with hugs, which I mean, if you're game <laughs> listeners, like come and hug me, I'll hug you all day long, but it's what a service that feels as good as a hug. What does mm-hmm. that look like? And yeah. what does that feel like? Mm-hmm. And how do we, how do we create that? And I right. think, for, so for me, it's warmth, Yeah, you know, just a ton of warmth, openness, mm-hmm. service. Yeah. Cause Damn, service has been, I mean, there's pockets of of business. Businesses have really figured stuff out. Like it's amazing. Yep. What mm-hmm. I think if nothing, we've proven that we're super industrious. Yeah. Just by nature. Like we'll figure stuff out and we're all much more flexible than we ever thought we were. But I think now is just that chance to I think if if anybody had a business prior to the pandemic and it was grounded in anything connected to service, like the reason for you doing it, it is time to double down on that reason. Like mm-hmm. reconnect to your purpose, mm-hmm. reconnect to the mission of what, why you created this thing in the first place and lead with that. I mean, that's, that's what I've in, that's what I intend to do. But also as a consumer, reconnect with your community. Oh, amen. Reconnect with mm-hmm. the small businesses that have push their asses to the limit and see them. Yeah. Because I think that's something that we all need to realize is big box stores have their corporate rules that may not apply to our small towns. Yep. But these small businesses have looked at the community, have looked at what's going on in our back door. Right. And applied it to you not to the corporate rules. Right. I would also say when I think about what we can all do right now, like as soon as you feel safe to go outside without a mask on, put a big damn smile on your face and keep it there. Because it's smiling is something, Mm. it is one of the best and it's like the best tool and the least utilized tool. Smiles disarm everybody. Mm -hmm. They do. I mean, that's, I think that's why God put them on our faces. Like they're right (laughs) there. Like it's, yeah. So, and you just think about how much has been missed. Yeah. You know, so, we, so we, we went to a, we went to a play. My mom and dad and I went to a play. It was our young cousin up in Fargo and they still required masks. Right. Which again, it's, we're not through it yet. So this is just got to yep. deal with that. So we're all wearing masks and we took photos with her and my mom and dad, you know, they're, my parents are older school. They're old school. Right. So my dad's just like, what the hell's the point of pictures? Like you can't, you know, we're all like smiles, you know, like smile with your eyes and you, we all do. And if you're actually smiling, your eyes will still show it and whatever, but there's a lot that's been missing a lot of nuance and a lot of emotion. And so like, as soon as you feel safe without that thing on, like use your face. 
And that sounds really stupid, but no, I think for those of I, us that are service people, yes. absolutely, get a damn smile on your face and keep it there. Yeah, like there. don't get caught in your because like I have resting bitch face, like it's a thing, it's a real thing. <laughs> and when I get, I um, don't see that on you ever. Oh god, so that's yes. the thing. Like, if if I get like in my head about stuff and I'm like concentrating, I will look just straight up angry at people, very harsh features and whatever. So it's this is simply like for me, I'm gonna have to be thinking about that. Like, yeah. And now even when I go out on my community, I literally think about like, how do I have like a pleasant look on my face? Not like I'm like walking around town with a crazy smile, but like waving and Mm -hmm. smiling, like doing a lot more of that. I think we all need to commit to it because that's being intentional. It's a quick hit of connection. I think that we shouldn't overlook. Right. That's great. That's all. That's my, honestly, my number one process for the studio is when somebody walks in, you smile at them within five seconds. Yeah. That is my number one process. Yeah which is fantastic. It is. It's super important too. Like I it will almost say needs to be put into a, a process. Yeah. Your main daytime employee there, Joni, does a very good job of smiling with her entire body. She and does. you can, I mean, she's <laughs> been wearing that mask since day one. And, but she does, she does a very good job at it. The, she's a, she's the a non, beautiful human. The nonverbals are, yeah. are really important. And I think it's something we should all be thinking about, like open, yeah, you know, that like open body language and what that looks like. If you want people to feel good about being there, we've got to try extra hard mm-hmm. to to put out that vibe. Yeah, I've noticed that in the last uh, couple of weeks when people come in, they come in and they're just instantly <sighs> right. They you take know, a deep the breath. shoulders relax. Mm-hmm. and they just sit. And a lot more people are coming in by themselves to paint at the studio which is very refreshing. Yeah. And I don't ever want somebody to feel like they have to come in with somebody because there's always going to be somebody with them there. Like right. we're always going to have a conversation with you. Yep. And we're creating those spaces, which I think is so fun. One of the things I think we can also do right now is make it easy for people. Yeah. So everywhere I've gone in the last year, right away, I'm like, do I have to wear a mask? What are the mm-hmm. rules? Do I have to put on hand sanitizer? Like, I know that sounds like not a big deal, but especially if it's an event or whatever, you just feel apprehension, yeah. apprehension right? Yeah. You're not you're not sure what the rules are. And so I think, again, for people that have a physical space, now it's like, if you see a second of confusion on a guest's face, right. fix it. Mm-hmm. Like, charge them and tell them how things work. Like, we have such a cool opportunity for that too. And I know it's like, well, it's a coffee shop, like it was pretty obvious. But if if I'm not sure where to go or what to, or like where to order, all that kind of stuff, just got make it simple. Because we've been in a year of just complete apprehension where you don't feel relaxed fully yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. Don't you think getting your, your customers to a state of just like full relaxation, what a goal, right? Yeah. I think we're, and this plays in, or maybe the reason people are coming in by themselves, I am searching for things that take me out of my, we've all been in our own heads for right. so long now. Right, right. I need things that take me out of it. And, and I think, I mean, we'll see rate, well, they, they say rates of like drug use and alcohol, alcoholism are through the roof because right. people want to, want to disconnect from that. Right. My daughter and I started uh, shooting archery. Yeah. Oh, cool. And yep. uh, we're, we started because my wife is dead set on there are huge piles of money for female archer scholarships. She's like, she is not wrong. My I, son was in archery. Is that right? We went to national. He went to nationals. Yeah. Our oh, team in Oaks. Yeah. I hate it when she's right. She's right. <laughs> if you're so, listening, you are so right. So I started doing it with her because, you know, yeah. because of that. And yep. then I found like for it's such a, I guess, a mind body connection that it shuts everything else off. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And I, I really have come to come to enjoy it. it's small tweaks. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't do sports in like the other ways, you know. Like Carly was does softball. I just my oh, cool. my body I doesn't that. work Love that way. That. Yeah. Like and can I admire the people who can do like those gross motor shifts? If I shoot the basketball this way, it works better. I, I can't do that. Do, I don't know. Do you know a yeah. fun fact about Brody? Uh-huh. So, right. I I've been playing. <laughs> softball since I was nine. Right. And so me and my family, (laughs) me and my family, uh, like my parents have run the softball league in Watertown for 25 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. She's like, she's a pro. Like I grew up right when I was 10, I fell off of bleachers and broke my arm. Like my, uh, childhood was growing up the softball field weekends on the tournaments. Right. Yeah. And so me and my family, like if they're across the room, I'll like throw something at them and like, catch it. Right. Catch. 
And so I, I forget to do that. <laughs> and so I do that to Brody and I forget halfway through the thing is in the air and Brody's like, ah! That's amazing. So here's oh, God, a, she just called you right off. I out. totally did because I, was, I played real sports like theater and speech and debate. OK, but, you know, I just find this relationship so fun and so it's precious. Non- it's so precious. I love it. Sportsy he is. Right. But I respect him for it. And I respect his gaming aspect. Like I just watched a four hour movie. Yeah. Because of that. But I was literally just talking to my mom about it. I'm like, mom, you don't know something funny as I've learned this about Brody that I can't throw things at him. <laughs> yeah, got to <laughs> like, give me no, a heads right? up. I got to get in the stance. He does. You know? like, you know? Brody, it's going to come. Throw yeah. I'm going to throw it. Get ready. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're, if we're telling tales out of school, Please. This, oh, geez. <laughs> so she gets in these moods here where I, I mean, <laughs> I am an organized <laughs> chaos. It's, it's there's there's piles, right? And you know where all the piles are, and you oh, know what's in said yeah. piles. Yes. And so she gets in these when she gets anxious, she'll just like clean. My wife will do the same thing. I call her rage cleaning at home because she'll rage just get like cleaning. really angry and has to clean. And so she'll just go around the warehouse and kind of just <laughs> clean stuff up. And she'll try to take oh. my shit. And I'm like, nope, leave that there. And so now I've intentionally started to like create. This is my this like, is my he'll space. Put his arms out like yep. this. Like she'll be circle. cleaning around. Me and I'll and t- I'm not, I'm done with the point of being like respectful of like, well, maybe I shouldn't. No, now I'm going to work here. Yeah. Yeah. And if you See, need to do all this, you can do it around you're like, me. You're like work spouses. It's yeah. Because this, this is my process to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, I love he it. Yeah. Down, he's like, this is my space. I'm like, all right, well, I got two more inches here. I can clean. <laughs> you guys, <sighs> that's so funny. Yeah. You're so lucky to have each other. I'm sure you realize this. I will say that, yes. Yeah. Having yes. been in other um, work relationships, the uh, a, a good partner is worth its worth its weight in gold. It totally. Um, right. Not only just in the workload, but sharing the vision. And, you know, you talk about you had a mental breakdown three weeks ago. I totally did as well. Yeah. And it's, it's really someone hard. who totally gets what we're doing and mm-hmm. can go through it with you mm-hmm. is incredibly valuable. Yeah. It is. And I, so I guess I'm going to, I'll make a, this is like a a zip recruiter ad. Um, I'm (laughs) currently looking for my work spouse. I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not like actively looking for a partner, but I, I haven't met that person yet. Right. right? Like, and that's okay. I've got lots of cool partners. Like my board members are, are partners in this with me. I've got lots of support. I don't feel unsupported, but it isn't the same as what yeah. What you guys have. So hold on to it. It's really special. But I think there is something to be saying about finding your tribe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because if yes. you have not found your tribe, like once you do, like we have our Aberdeen tribe, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And I feel like we are now having our regional tribe. Yes. With you involved. Pick mm-hmm. me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's so refreshing to be able to call those people and say, and know who you are, know your story, and right. be able to talk very frank and say, this is what I'm thinking. Am I crazy or should I continue down that rabbit hole? Yeah. Like Brody's already, he's called me a few, right. t- a few times. And I don't even start with, hey, Rebecca, how you doing? I'm like, what do you know about regionalism? Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's honestly, though, it's yeah. like, the, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. And that that is actually, that is what it takes. So I think sometimes we kind of cheapen the idea of a tribe, like, Mm -hmm. because it gets so buzzwordy and like people have kind of capitalized on it in a gross way. And this whole like find your tribe and love them hard, right? Like I've heard that. I've seen that on like files and quote cards on the Instagram. I just am like, it's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Like the role that those people play for you is deeper than that. Like I did, I, I had a full on breakdown just a few weeks ago and it was, Oh, so ugly. And I, my mom is part of my tribe. So she was the first person I went to. But if you don't have people where you can really be real with and ask the questions in a completely unfiltered way. And cause I still like, I still want to look smart and I want to be smart. And I don't want to, I don't want to screw up. Like Oof, I feel that I, you know, I don't, I want to do it well. I want to do it right. And that can be, um, so for me, I'll just, I'll share this as like a behind the scenes thing with Rebecca, um, Rebecca from Oaks. I, <laughs> When I, when I get in that mindset, I start to have this like proving energy. Mm. And then I, I shift from it's proving and it goes into performing Mm. and it's not the same as just being. 
So this is a this is a thing for me personally that I I watched, I see it in myself and it's a it's a care I have to be really careful with my energy because like I'm here with you guys right now. I am in no way trying to prove anything. We're just having a great conversation. I'm not performing, right? Right. But there have been other podcast instances or situations where I'm in my head more mm. and I'm thinking, thinking. Of, over, overthinking too much, you know, yeah. and I'm not being just me. So along the same lines, when you're talking to somebody, if you find yourself second guessing the way you should ask the question or you feel like you have to keep qualifying where you're coming from, that person, you know, maybe down the road can be your tribe, but initially you just, mm. it should feel easy. It should feel super easy. And, and not easy, like you're never challenged, right? Your tribe challenged, you'd get challenged by your tribe, but you can bring it, you can bring your full self to the table and you don't worry about judgment and you don't, right. and there isn't this like need to look good or sound good or be right. That's, yeah. that to me is a huge marker. There's no for me competition. Of, there, it's not competition, right? Like it's, we, we actually want the best for each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really important because you can't do this kind of work without it. Gosh, you are so good about stepping back and knowing yourself, stepping back and looking at yourself it's and therapy. noticing. <laughs> it is. It's therapy. I go to therapy too, yeah. right? I have an it's art therapy. therapist in town, but it's, and I, I've had to in the last year, because I, I mean, the last year and a half, I was a caretaker for my dad. Right. right. And so trying to get out of that mindset of, right. I had two kids in three years. Yep. I'm a caretaker. Yeah. Trying to get out of that mindset and being like, no, I need to take care of myself. Who's taking care of Carly? Right. Mm -hmm. And being very intentional about taking an hour out of my day. Right. Right. And I still struggle with that. Like I have not worked out in the morning since I don't remember when, because I start to feel guilty about taking work time out of that time. Right. And then I feel guilty for taking husband time out of workout time. You know, it's, it's. Yeah. And then try to fit like friends in there. Yeah. Just social it just, friends. It just doesn't Are happen. you an extrovert? Would you consider yourself an extrovert? I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know either. I feel like I'm in that weird limbo stage where I'm still trying to figure out where you. Carly in mom life. Like where you draw your energy right, from. Where I draw my energy from, because mm-hmm. all day during the day I'm around people mm-hmm. and I'm dreaming and I'm exploring all those things. But I found that at night, I kind of just like to lay in bed and shut my brain off. So maybe I'm, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I feel like I go through phases. Am I what? An extrovert? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like off the charts. I could see. I'm off the charts, actually. Go both ways for Um, you, but. Yeah. So like on the Myers-Briggs, like I'm a 30 on a scale of zero to 30. (laughs) Extroversion. Yeah. Yeah, I just, because I I love ideas. And that doesn't ever mean that like I don't need alone time. Right. I mean, you know, that's not what it means. But I, I full on get my energy from people, from other people. So the pandemic was really hard. Um, but then I just want to say, like I said that once in a training and this woman raised her hand and she's like, I just want to say though, as an introvert, she said, I, I was never alone during the pandemic. And so it wasn't easier for us either. Mm. And I was like, oh, there it is. There's the other side of the coin, you know, like, mm. but anyway, I mean, I think about that stuff because I like assessments and I think personality traits yeah. are really interesting, but. We're getting ready to do one for the market. What's your, what's your favorite? My favorite personality, personality. profile. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's hard. Okay. I'll, I've got thoughts. I'll share my thoughts. Please. So the Myers-Briggs I think is really thorough. The challenge, the challenge with it. So Myers-Briggs has four dichotomies, right? You get a four letter type. The average person, unless you truly just geek all the way out about them, like I do, you won't remember what your type is. You won't remember your four letter type. So mm. it's less sticky, I think in a lot of respects. Um, so the disc, when it comes to personality profiles, yeah. I think is a little more um, malleable, but I have a lot of people in my life and I haven't dug way, way into it, but the Enneagram is something that people are that's, obsessed with. Yeah, that's, I think the one that we're leaning towards. Really? Okay. Yeah. What What's making you lead that way? Uh, Myers-Briggs feels older to me. And it and, is. Uh, my, yep. my wife uh, has taken it and she's like right in the middle of like two or three of them. And then it's, it's not helpful. It feels, yeah, it feels less impactful. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Uh, I, I did the disc as part of uh, Leadership South Dakota and it was. What are you? Uh, I am an I. Of course you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Full on. Full on. Not, don't even lean to the, the no. D or the S. Yeah. No. Me too. <laughs> High fives for eyes. Sorry, Full guys. On. 
And I, Me too. I realized my, and in doing that though, I realized that my old business partner was, was a C. So Ooh. we're on the exact yep. opposite sides That's of rough. each other. It, and it helped me try to communicate with him more yep. uh, or in, in his style. And I, I was a communication major in college. Like I really enjoy tailoring my, my style to, to the audience or to whoever I'm talking to, to be more impactful. Right. Right. It's, it's fun. Uh, but I've, I've heard a lot about the Enneagram and I don't, we were talking about it over like Thanksgiving or something. And, and I looked it up and I said, well, that's, that's eerily accurate. So mine, mine is. Yeah. 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 I like the web aspect of the Enneagram. Um, Me that too. With, you can, with the wings and all. I, I haven't done I, a ton of research. I but. just read one over the weekend that had like, it had like a scale of, I think it was one to seven or one to eight, where like you're at your very best to you're at your very worst, mm-hmm. like my type and what it looks like. And I just went, oh, because like what it, where it devolves mm-hmm. is when I'm at my worst. And I know yeah. that about myself, that striving, you know, just almost like then I become super critical of myself and of others. Like I'm judgy, yeah. all these things. I was just like, oh my God, that's me. Mm-hmm. So there's, the Enneagram's cool. I mean, I think- I think here's my deal. I truly believe that it's less about the assessment. And it's more about how you choose to implement it, implement yeah. it and, and, yeah. and assimilate yep. it and like make it part of who you guys are as a team. Yep. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Because yeah. you can poorly implement the best damn assessment in the world right. and it's not going to have any value for you. But yeah. See, I'm very good about uh, personal development for business. So I don't know if you could necessarily call that personal development. But like even on the way to Watertown, I was listening to books about self-help and I'm like, well, duh, fucking do that better. Right. Like, like, it, <laughs> right. like those ones, those ones don't impact me because I'm like, I'm motivatively driven to, mm-hmm. yeah, if I need to do that, okay, let's just fucking do it. Right. Sorry, mom, for swearing. But well, here, here's the deal. So I actually have a take on this. I mean, yeah. I honestly think that when it comes to our businesses, they'll only grow as far as we grow ourselves. Absolutely. I mean, I just, I really truly yeah. believe that. Like, if you, if we have our own, that's why I'm in, that's why I'm in counseling. That's why, that's why <laughs> right. I'm a big advocate of it, actually. Yeah. You come out of the womb wired. Mm-hmm. like hardwired, right? Like you don't know that and it doesn't start to develop. But as soon as your our personalities just like, they're just inherent. I've got three kids, like I see it, mm-hmm. right? But then there's all of the conditioning and all of the programming that we're fed, which, you know, hey, parents, like that's our job and that's terrifying. Don't dwell on it. Like I have a good friend that said, um, I paid for my therapy. My kids can pay for theirs. Like they'll be <laughs> fine. Uh, but then you're like, when you're coming into your own and you get out of that bubble of your home mm-hmm. life and you start being confronted with different ideas or different people or different ways of thinking. And then you constantly have to do that. Like, is this true of me? Mm-hmm. Like, is this thing that I believe is yeah. the true, is it actually true of me? And that's the journey, man. I mean, that's, that's what it is. And I just, I know that there are so many things I can just be better at. And so right. I try. I don't know. I just, that's going to be for the rest of my life. Like I'm never going to be done trying to be better than I am. It's maybe kind of exhausting. No, I don't think so. It's I not think like that's... a pedal to the metal kind of thing all right. the time, but that's just a part well, of and you, everything's you, running in the background all right. the time. You get in different seasons and I, right. this is the first time I've had employees that I'm responsible for and I know I'm going to screw it up if I don't pay attention. And so I'll help it's, you. It's, I'm, this is my jam. Great. Yeah. Uh, it's, I've been very intentional about read it. Like I got to have my shit on lock mm-hmm. so that I can be able to manage, manage them and keep, cause we're, they're, they're looking at us. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, humility is the biggest thing I think you can bring to the table here is just like, when you don't know the answer, just admit that you don't know the Absolutely. answer or just say like, Hey, like I'm truly doing the best I can. This is a whole thing that's new to me. And just constantly be that. That's what I think is missing that heart part of it is is what's missing from so many boss and right. employee relationships. Mm-hmm. Like you're just not honest about what it's like for you. Yeah. And not saying like, feel bad for me. It's it's just being honest. Like, you don't think you, is, like, I, I want to yeah. figure this out. I'm trying to get better at it. And just constantly having that back and forth. It's it's a hell well, of a and, dance. That's for yeah. sure. Well, and it, we're, we're being very upfront with our employees. Like we don't know what we don't know. 
Yeah. Uh, especially right now. Like we, oh gosh. we we're, we're painting and texturing. Like I, I don't even know what the counters look like right now. I don't know where the espresso, I know generally where it's going to sit. I have no idea what's on either side. Like I, I have no idea what this process is going to look like. We're going to figure this out together, but right. I, I need you to not just look at me for direction. I need you to say this doesn't work or this does. Right. And you're building the airplane as you're flying it, exactly. so to speak. Right. Yep. Like that's, and that's, so hard. Because like I said, when you're just a person that's like, oh, and I think too, we sometimes tell ourselves the story of like, well, you know, if I were just better at X, Y, or Z, I wouldn't be feeling this way. And that's mm. just patently not true. Like yeah. stress comes because life is stressful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, these, these like, I, I can't, it's so funny. Like the electrician will pull me aside and be like, so what about this, this, and this? And I'll be like, I don't know. And I don't know. And oh, guess what? Don't know. Still don't know. And then I'll say, what do you think? And I initially I was like, I'm sorry. I kept apologizing. Mm-hmm. And at some point I thought, what the fuck am I apologizing I'm not an for? I don't know what I'm doing. That's what you're here for. Mm-hmm. You know, guide me. Like if you give me some data and information, I'll figure it out. But you know, like you just we're hard on ourselves. That's what's really hard about this. But you're not gonna know everything. You can't and, possibly know everything. And I, I, I don't expect to know everything right away. Right. Right. I think that's just the nature of the game. But I think in my business life, right, I have learned that we have to be in our business, walking the path with our employees. Mm-hmm. I hate when owners are not walking the path and then telling them how to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. When they're trying to guide them on how to do it, but maybe that is not the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. But how can you know that if you're not there? Right. Yeah. So I well, and giving people ownership over how things could be best done. Absolutely. Especially if it's going to be their area to manage mm-hmm. or to run. Yeah. It's yeah, that it's that balance of of control and empowerment, right? Like it's that's mm-hmm. that's it's tricky. It's tricky for everybody, yeah. I think. But, but I think it's really fun. I'm yeah, the, I'm, I'm so excited for you guys. Excited stage to just. Like I've seen it for so long and I'm excited for Brody to see all the things that we picked out because we've talked about this in the past, like the, you know, yeah, uh, the visual seeing it, like he can feel it, mm-hmm. but it's different to visualize it. Totally. Uh, I, every time I see you guys like, Hey, we're hiring, blah, blah. I just get so damn excited for you guys. <laughs> it's I do. It's just, oh, it's going to be, I've been, be so I've great. been in a place for a long time where things weren't moving like at all with my other business. And so it's really fun to get to a, a place now where things are moving so fast. Yeah. And uh, I just, I just got to keep up, which is why I firmly believe like I, I will screw this up if I don't pay attention. And so I'm, I'm doing, doing the best I can, but I think you're right. Like, you know, things will only go so far as you, as you let them or mm-hmm. as you're able to, to keep, to keep go. doing it. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm so excited for you as well. Yeah. Like you are at such a fun stage. I feel like we're both at super fun stages of this, super stressful stages, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but super exciting stages because you're starting to see the vision come to life. Yeah. Like getting to take people into the building now where it's framed. Yeah. And you can, you can see it. And like that, those, when those walls got exposed, I know I was just like, yeah, there it is. It's little there pieces. There she is. Right? It's little pieces mm-hmm. along the way that keep giving you energy. Be like, all right, a couple more weeks, a couple more weeks, one more day. Right. And people will get it. Do you ever get scared of what comes next after the, like it's built now? Yeah, totally. Like, what do, <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah. And now you got to run the thing. Right. Yeah, totally. You have to and execute. In, yeah. Yep. And in some ways that's easier in my head. And in some ways it's, it's, more complicated, but I, I don't know yes, because I can't yes, see, like, I yes. can't, I don't have the vision like Carly does. So I, I know what it'll feel like. And I want to create that. I can't physically see it. And I don't know anything about water and electricity. And so it, it is mm-hmm. just difficult to, to be there. But, but yeah, lately I've been like, okay, well, it's, we're painting now. Like this is what, yeah. what comes next. I've, I've said to my mom, my mom actually said this to me. So we're, we're in the building. We're talking about seating and spacing and blah, blah, blah. Yep. And I'm like, and then people can be here and people can be here. And she's like, where are all these people coming from? <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing and I'm like, I-, I will invite them, you know? And she's just like, oh my, you know, and she just had this moment and she says this to me and I'm like, oh God, yeah. <gasps> like I have to get the people here too. Yeah. And, you know, it's, so I think for me, like I know full well that I'm going to be alone in that building a lot. 
especially mm. just starting out. But already I'm just like, I think once it's built, it's just like my, my mindset is I need to find as many people as possible to say yes to, mm. you know, like it's a yes place, <laughs> you know, like you want to try that? Hell yeah. And just, yes, yes, yes. Like bring it all. And I think that that's a cool way to set us apart from how a lot of things feel a lot of the times right. is like everybody leads with no. And I just get to say yes. Mm -hmm. So like, you want to have an event here? Yes, let's figure it out. So I don't know. I mean, I definitely have that fear, but I'm just like, well, it'll work. It'll be, it'll be good. And it, somebody asked me recently on a, sh on a podcast, well, as I was on studio 701, which is a, like a TV show actually. Mm -hmm. And I was on zoom and she said, how have people been? The question was something like, how receptive have people been to this idea? And I said, that's a really interesting question. Like I said, so many people don't get it yet. Right. And I said, but when I find the people that get it, they're like so over the moon about it mm -hmm. that it, they kind of balance out this kind of meh, response your, to it. They're your tribe. They're my tribe or they're my partners or they really see it and can't wait to be a part right, of it, you know? Right. So it's weird. And it's actually that polarized. Right. It's not like nobody hates it, but there's a lot of apathy towards it. Like, oh, well, okay. So good for her. Right. Just kind of meh. <laughs> That's Do you feel the emoji like face of meh. it's harder to find the people or share the story of your vision to people? I don't think either is actually hard. Okay. Like I'm at a point now where, so, okay. So here's a good example. So I, again, like running out of money, right? We're like running out of money on our, on mm -hmm. our line of credit. And there's going to be whole big chunks of things that have to happen. And I had partners in mind, like people in organizations or groups in mind that I think would make a smart partnership. And I, for whatever reason, I'm just like sitting with them in the back of my head. And one day I woke up and I'm like, why am I not just asking? So I, I kind of now too, am also in the mindset of like, ask, I have to, I constantly have to carry the torch for this thing. It's my thing. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's some freedom in that too. Like, even though yes, then you open yourself up to the, no, we don't really want to, but it's answers then. And then you mm -hmm. can move on to the next ask. So asking is a huge thing too. And I just think we don't give ourselves that freedom to just ask for what we want. What do you need? What do you want? Ask for it. And that's kind of cool. That's mm -hmm. been really cool, actually. I feel like we have a recurring theme on this podcast. I feel like in the last two, three episodes, we ask that question and everybody always says, just ask the big questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get them out of your damn head. Mm -hmm. Stop thinking the what if. And just ask because the thoughts coming up in your head. I've said this a million times. It's coming up in your head. Stop shutting it down. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your energy. Right. And figure out what to do with it. Like do something with yes. it. Yes. Right. I don't know. I mean, I just, the, the people I've met, you two yeah. numbered among them. Like it's all been because of this vision that I have for this thing. Mm -hmm. And I just, just to feel like there's like beauty just popping up all around me beautiful people and beautiful yeah. stories and great, great people that I want to spend time with. That is such a gift. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what happens with this building, like no matter what happens with growing small towns, I am full on enriched because of it. Like I, I know that. So it, it's been stressful, yeah. but that's character, right? Like we don't get better when shit goes easy. Like yeah. what's that about that? Nobody, nobody grows from that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just trying to, Trying to keep it all in perspective. It's good. No matter what, it's good. The experience has been worth it. Your passion is so contagious and I love it so oh, much. Thanks, friend. Hey, big congrats to you, Entrepreneur of the Year. Oh, right? right? Entrepreneur of the Year. That That's was right. the, the title. That is so freaking fantastic. Thank you. And you know what? You're doing, you're doing so much to elevate artists and art. It's really, really important. Absolutely. I hope that I get to be a part of that, like elevation yeah. of that whole group of people. It's so important. Yeah. It's beyond important. I think now more than ever, people don't know that art therapy is a thing. Right. And I go back to, you know, how you are so wise to just stop and look and listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. Same thing when working with art and Brody, you know how you mentioned you like archery because it 
That's the only thing you can think about, right? You'd make tiny little tweaks to make that happen. Same thing with art. Mm -hmm. You have to stop. And the only thing you can think about is where that brush is going. Or the only thing you can think about is how hard you're pushing that clay. And I've told people multiple times that this clay rose project that I'm doing, and people don't get it until they get it, but clay can pick up on your feelings. Clay can pick up on your energy. If you're wanting to rush through it, if you're anxious, you're in unintentionally going to press the clay too hard and it's going to get messed up, right? Like I'm sure Breen has sat on the wheel when she's like anxious, right? Or something's happening and the pot has flown off the wheel or she's pressed too hard when she's throwing. Little in- unintentional things come out in art therapy that make you stop, take a deep breath and just reset and refocus your mind. You know, this is this is so interesting. I, I feel like we're giving your listeners all sorts of nuggets today <laughs> and mine because yes. we're totally going to put this on my show too. One of the things I realized when I would have been kind of having my little breakdowns, yeah. my, my moments of just, if you can just stop and reconnect to your breathing, I know that that's so over said, mm-hmm. but I was breathing really shallowly, like barely taking and you know, if you all of a sudden you go, Oh my gosh. Okay. Like, and I, I would like lay down and put my hand on my belly and make sure that I fully expand and contract like those deep belly breaths. Right. It's really centering mm-hmm. and like really important mm-hmm. because it's this weird unintentional thing, right? We just like, Oh yeah, I'm breathing. But are you really breathing? Like your body was meant to breathe and it can do so much to center you. It can so do so much. Art is a great, that's a great, it's such a, I mean, it ties into stress yeah. relief too. And yeah, it's, it's special. What you do is super special. I love it. On a side note, breath in your lungs is super special. Oh, have it right. there. Yeah. And I think that's, again, one thing that the Clay Rose Project, I really am so excited. We're almost two months away, month away, month and a half away from this Clay Rose Project. What's your being, count at? Uh, May 19th is it. No, you're, how happening. many do you have? I have... Fired 303. And the goal is 500? The goal is 500. And I just changed up my display at Colorful Creation. So they are now in the front window that you can see when you come in. And I'm getting more emotional the more roses I see added to this. Can you tell me more about this project? Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. I I mean, I don't know what the Clay Rose Project is. What is it? So the Clay Rose Project. So my dad passed away May 19th of 2020. And he passed away of cancer, um, terminal cancer, cancer of unknown origin. So we could never figure out where the mother source was coming from. And so yes. he had seven different kinds of chemos and nothing worked because you couldn't figure out where it's coming from. So you don't know how to treat it, right? So very uh, draining for me because I'm a caretaker and I want to fix and I've always fixed, right? But I don't like, I don't do well with uh, stop girl, stop apologizing because just fucking do it. And so I struggled and dad was my my rock, my man, right? He helped me do everything. And so when he passed away, I had gotten to how I coped was just working, right? I just work and I just put my head down and I go and I kind of ignored it for certain aspects of life. Um, And then it got to the new year and I heard everybody saying 2021, 2020 is over, thank God. And it hit me like a ton of bricks right between the eyes because then it was in the past. Mm-hmm. And then it's real mm-hmm. that that year is gone, that he's gone. And so I instantly went into the grief stage of depression and anger really hard. And so my instinct as a human is I just needed to create something. I needed to do something. And so one thing I have not done in a long time is worked with clay. And I really love it. I just have not taken time for me, like I said earlier, because... Right. I'm a caretaker. Um, So I started uh, working with this clay and I'm like, you know what? Dad really loved roses and he really loved yellow roses. So I'm going to make some roses, a dozen roses, and I'm going to put at his gravesite that will never deteriorate. I love that. They're going to be made out of clay. Mm -hmm. So I started making these. I had my husband rolling out the slabs and my son was trying to cut with, you know, all the tools that I had out and it turned into this family thing. And it helped me to get into the acceptance stage. The power of working with clay, the power of molding it and grooming it and knowing that it was going to be something that I put out there for him forever. Right. 
And so talking with my art therapist and then talking to Brody and the different team, I got this idea of, well, what if I can take that same experience I had of the clay helping me move on and other people could do it? Because she was going to do this all by herself. So, yeah. So I was going to, my idea was, what if I made 500 roses and I just had everybody see these roses in an installation? And so I'm like, I'm just going to make 500 roses because I really enjoy doing it. And, you know, maybe somebody seeing this will be helpful. And then I'm like, you know what? Wait, what if I do a video, right? And I have my husband next to me who does not have a career. I can't believe I didn't see this. So (laughs) thank you for telling me the whole story. Absolutely. Seriously. So um, I have my husband next to me and he has no creative bone in his body. Bless his soul. I still love him. That is not true. He is very TikTok famous. Oh, good Lord. Okay, I'm going to continue with my story. Come back to that. Uh, So I have him next to me and I'm going to teach him how to make a clay rose because at this point he was just rolling with me. Right. And so I teach him how to make a clay rose. I record it on the video. Um, I put it on Facebook and I say, hey, if you want to make a clay rose, I'm going to give you a pound of clay for free. You watch the video, you make a rose, you engrave somebody's name into it, or you do something with it. You bring it back to us. I'm going to fire it. And then I'm going to, on May 19th, the one year anniversary of my dad passing away, I am going to install these 500 roses somewhere in Aberdeen. And at that point... I just want everybody to stop, appreciate the breath in their lungs, appreciate the friend beside them, and know that everybody had their own struggles in 2020. We all went through something, whether it wasn't as stream as someone passing away. Maybe it was depression. Maybe it was anxiety. Maybe it was self-isolation. I don't know. But maybe these 500 roses can help us realize that this community is great. And to stop and just slow down and appreciate the life that you have. Oh my God. (laughs) Like seriously, Carly, that I just think you are such a gift to this community (laughs) and to me. Thank you for sharing that with me. You're you're at 303 already? 303. And we started at February 1st. Right now I'm just thinking about, so my grandparents were really important to me. Mm -hmm. Like I think I need to come and get some clay make some roses. Absolutely. It's very therapeutic, but it's also, and I've had, if you are making a rose and you want to make a rose for yourself, absolutely. I just charge $8 and then you can paint it with us and I'll fire it and then you can have it. So I have the clay roses and the rule is that you put a hole in the bottom and then I'm going to put a piece of wire underneath it so that you can stick it in the ground and you you can use it for whatever. This is, then this is what art is meant to be. Like, Mm -hmm it isn't just the end result or what actually gets created. It's the meaning and it's the connection. And it is it is so healing. Yeah. It is so healing. And all of us have something to heal from. We Absolutely. do. Absolutely. This, this year, it's, and I mean, yeah. And I, I can't imagine how hard that is to have lost your, your father in 2020 because everyone's like, see you later, 2020. But that's not how you feel about it. And I get, mm-hmm. I totally get that. Yeah. But- it's not the last time that we're going to have no. big struggles like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just... It's not. So we need we do need to figure out how to connect to each other, how to cope. Mm-hmm. And art can be such a unifier in that. So what, what an amazing project. Yeah. Wow. And I'm just so excited for everybody to see all these roses together. And if you go to the front window of the studio, you'll see that every rose is totally different because every story is totally different. Right. Right. Oh, that's, that's it's amazing. so impactful. I think it's I think it's so interesting how that message is how we've come full circle, right? Yeah. Like we, we started out, I mean, in March and April, we're all in this together, guys. We can do this. Yes. And I think as we went, we realized that was bullshit. That total bullshit. Yeah. Right. We I mean, the same thing is hap or we're all we're not all we're not all in this together. What, yep. it's, we're, we're all in the same storm, storm but, but not, not in the, the same, same boat. boat. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so I I mean it was it was a hard year for me too. It, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't as hard as it was for Carly. Right. And so it's it's important to recognize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think it's the it's the perfect thing. The other big thing that I think that this again, this is super it is super full circle, but I think that the political climate of 2020, I feel like things were said face-to-face and a lot of social media 
that are going to be hard to come back from. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think there was a lot of behavior and a lot of words that were exchanged that may have created forever chasms that aren't, that aren't going to get bridged. Now I tend to be an optimist by nature. So I'm, I'm hoping that this, these kinds of things where people Mm -hmm. can come together and it's like, what can everybody contribute? What can everybody do regardless of who they voted for? Or, you know, and and, in COVID was absolutely another one of those things that just, just created enormous divides. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm just so over it. I, that's the part of all of this that I am most over. Like I'm so over anger and cynicism and bitterness. I, so this is, this is one of those examples of something where people can come together and co-create. And I think if we can give people places and ways to co-create. So when you're in the market, you can let people co-create the culture and the vibe that's so cool. In my space, people will get to co-create what that building is, what it means, what we give back to people. Yeah. Um, that's And that's what I think is going to bring us back together. It's it's just time. Like it's been, that's the thing that's been missing, I think. Mm-hmm. Boo to all of that. But yay to what's coming, right, guys? Last week, uh, the we had our librarian on and she said, I don't like saying that things will go back to normal because we never go backwards. Right. We don't go backwards. So what are we going to create now? Mm -hmm. There needs to be a rebirth of something and Mm -hmm. it's all going to, everything's going to be reborn, rebranded. Carly and I have been saying that this whole time that whatever Mm -hmm. happened in 2019 doesn't apply anymore. Doesn't apply. Doesn't. The the rules have changed. Right. Life has changed as we know it. So either change with it or, or not. Change is the most consistent thing in life. Totally. And I'll, I'll just tell you for me, my, my whole thing is, how do I continue to move forward with an unguarded and open heart? Because the last thing I want to do is continue to be armored up. Like it, it was really a tough year. I mean, just emotionally mm-hmm. how people treated each other. I, it was awful. I thought, um, and as an empath, I just like carried it around. Yeah. So I, I want to figure out how to, so I think boundaries are a huge part of that, you know, mm-hmm. like having good boundaries in place allows you to stay pretty open and yet protected so that you're not, yeah. um, vulnerable in all the wrong ways, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or exposed to, mm-hmm. to pain, but that's what connection is to me, right? Is allowing people actually in. Allowing them in and truly allowing right. them in. Truly allowing them in. Thanks for coming down. Oh this man, is, this you is guys, great. I just, I love you guys. This is so refreshing. Yeah. And I just, what I, what I love is that like Small talk's never really been my thing, like clearly, right? Like you think about <laughs> how deep we got on this on this show. Like that's those are my people, though. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we can talk about the weather, but why? Like <laughs> there's so many other things. I, to I have talk a farmer about. husband. We don't need to talk about the weather. Amen, sister. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So yeah. you guys, just I'm so proud of you. I mean, I'm just super proud of you. Aberdeen is lucky to have you guys, and I'm lucky to have you guys because you're part of my region. So next time we talk to you, it will be in your space. Yes, we're coming to you. Come to me, guys. Because I'd love Oaks to have you. Excited and proud to have you. Mm-hmm. Like Thanks. what you're doing is completely out of the textbook, but so needed in the textbook. Maybe and we're gonna all rewrite the textbook. Mm-hmm. What you think? Hey, absolutely. Oh, no. I'll draw the pictures. I'll write the book. <laughs> Brody will give us. Brody will be the head person to go promote uh, it to people. Yeah, That's right. I'll, I'll distribute it. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, do you want to drop your drop your contact? Where can people find you? Yeah, GrowingSmallTowns.org is the best place to find us, and you and can, the podcast is there too. Mm-hmm. And if you're listening on Growing to Small Towns podcast, you can find the Rural Revolution Thank you. Yeah. podcast, or you can find us at the Pheasant Canteen podcast studio here in Aberdeen. Or if you go to the Market on the Plaza, that's where you'll find us. All the places. All the places. Just come to Aberdeen, you'll find us. Too many, too many Facebook pages. Brody and Carly. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Carly. And thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Right? Okay. Did you feel the same way I felt recording that? Man, I hope so. They're just so honest and so real. And we talked about so many things, right? Like how challenging all of this can be and yet how we still move forward. And that's something that every single one of us can relate to. So hope that you love that. The thing I want to ask of you, um, we didn't record a fast five because come on, like it wouldn't have been fast. Let's be real. But what I'd love to ask is 
What ideas do you have about this idea of third places? What would help you as a a small town person get over the, maybe some of the fear and the anxiety of kind of coming back out into the world and allowing yourself to lean into that sense of belonging and community that we went without for such a long time. What, what would it take? What kinds of things are you looking for? You know, Brody talked about, you know, is it, is it Wi-Fi? Is it feeling like a place of home? Is it feeling known? Is it feeling warm? Is it feeling welcome? Like, what are the things I, we would love to hear from you and I'll be sure to share your feedback. If you give me some, I'll share it with Brody and Carly as they launch their physical space in Aberdeen. Um, if you are local to us, I highly encourage you once they're open, um, their opening dates coming up here, but just follow along there with their progress at the market on the plaza on social media. And you can find out, you know, when they're launching, what it's going to look like and just go and patronize their business business because they are doing rad, rad things for the city of Aberdeen and the region of which I am thrilled to be a part. So shoot me an email at director at growing Let me know what you're looking for in your third place. What can we do to make you feel welcome? And like you have, there's a sense of belonging for you. Okay. Uh, until I get to talk to you all again, as usual, please do what you can with what you have, where you're at. You help yourself, first of all, grow yourself. Like I said in the podcast episode today, I'm never going to be done. It's not like a thing that we achieve. It's a constant lifelong process. So help grow yourself. And just by the very act of doing that, you're going to help move your small town forward. See you next time, guys. Bye.